This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Chelsea. Chelsea is a champion surfer, so she's accustomed to moving super fast, which is why she relies on super fast broadband brought to her through Flow's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her family sharing and surfing and saving each month. Combined, she bundles her Flow mobile, home phone, and TV services so she can enjoy much more for much less, and so can you. Visit any Flow retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994, or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. It's Tuesday, April 19, and time for your Barbados Day evening news update. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kmar Jordan. Drug traffickers, beware. This country's director of public prosecutions, Charles Leacock, today warned that tougher laws are coming on civil forfeiture that will allow for the seizure of their assets. Addressing the fourth multilateral marine interdiction and prosecution summit at the Hilton Barbados this morning, Leacock warned that incarceration of drug traffickers was simply not enough, and he called for more legislation that hits them where it hurts most in their pockets. The trading or the dealing in drug trafficking of, uh, uh, in cannabis or cocaine or any of the other hard drugs uh, must continue. The fight against that must continue unabated and relentlessly. And in order to do that, not only must we continue to address the operational capabilities of interdiction, eradication, and incarceration, but we also must place much greater emphasis on taking the money out of it. We can no longer be satisfied with having drug traffickers in prison. Drug traffickers must be disgorged of their illegally gotten gains. And towards that end, we do need especially in this part of the world, much more modern legislation. The legislation on civil forfeiture is, should be passed sometime soon. In his address, Lika also raised concern that drug traffickers have been getting off scotch-free because they have been able to afford the best legal representation. Meantime, outspoken minister Donville Innes has some advice for Prime Minister Frendel Stewart. He's calling on the Prime Minister to engage the people more warning that the lack of communication will only lead to a vacuum. And I've said it quietly and sometimes not so quietly, that I will wish the Prime Minister be more engaged with the country. Mr. Stroke has his style. I would like Mr. Stroke to adopt a style that is more engaging at the national level, but it's not Mr. Stroke alone. It is the rest of my cabinet colleagues that ought to be more engaging with the country. I see if we don't do that, then the rest of the public sector starts to feel that they must withdraw and keep quiet on matters too as well. And then a vacuum emerges to want a better term in the society. So communication is key. In other political news, Attorney General Adriel Brathwith has taken the local media to task for not defending the island's international business sector. This is in light of the Panama Papers scandal. So far, 34 unnamed local companies have been listed in the Panama Papers, which is described as the history's biggest data leak, with an unprecedented 11.5 million files from the database of the world's biggest offshore law firm, Mossack Fonseca. However, while insisting Barbados is not a tax haven, Brathwaite is not satisfied with the local media's reporting on the scandal, which he describes as negative. He was addressing the monthly meeting of the St. James South constituency branch at the weekend. But what I heard and what I've seen in the media is how many Barbadian companies are involved. Are there 36 companies or 24 companies? And who owns them? The negative. Nothing to defend an industry that supports most of what we do around here. Because if you check what happens in our economy, second only to tourism in terms of supporting our way of life is the international business sector. And I'm not asking the, the media to write lies about the sector. I'm asking the media in their reporting to do an analysis in terms of what exactly we do as a country from an international business perspective. And how does that differ from what you're seeing in the world media? Because what we see in these papers is a suggestion that once you have a company any jurisdiction like Barbados, then you're doing something illegal. There's a call for Warren St. Michael to be officially designated a town. The call came from Member of Parliament for St. Michael North, Ronald Topping today, whose constituency straddles part of the Warren's area. 
Speaking in Parliament during debate on the multi-million dollar Warren's traffic improvement project, Mr. Toppin argued that Warren's was too highly developed and commercialized not to be formally designated a town. He therefore believes Warren's should have its own police station, post office, and bus station. Earlier today, in leading off debate in the House, Minister of Transport and Works Michael Lashley explained that the delay in completing the Warren's traffic improvement project was mainly due to difficulties in obtaining the land needed to facilitate the now six-year-old project. The project as I can explain today is about 80% completed for starting work to be done on on Green Hill, St. Michael, along Redmond Village to um, by the Delta St. Thomas. The project is, of course, is given 24 months behind, 24 months behind schedule. My scrambling to a one year extension on the original finished date. The major um, task is the acquisition of lots in the document. In fact, the estimated cost of acquisition of other lands is close to $17 million in that area. In sports, pressure continues to mount on Dave Cameron and the rest of the WICB board to step down. The latest call comes from the West Indies cricket legends, who are demanding the board's immediate resignation. The legends are also insisting on the establishment of an interim board and the creation of a new structure to replace the WICB and to manage the region's cricket. Their statement follows last month's emotional outburst, we all remember, of Wendy skipper Darren Sammy minutes after the regional side copped the World T20 Championship in Kolkata, India. The legends, who led and dominated world cricket, in an era now gone past, say they cannot simply sit idly by and watch everything they fought so hard for to build and to achieve disappear because of the actions of what they deem an incompetent board, and they vow to protect their legacy. There's regional and international news after this short break. Your first friend, your first love, your first teacher. Show your appreciation for the first lady in your life. Send a photo of you and your mother to we love you mom at barbadostoday.bb to be featured in our special Mother's Day photo album and for a chance to win some exciting prizes. To mom with love. In news from the region, President Raul Castro will remain Cuba's Communist Party's chief for yet another five years. The 84-year-old is due to step down as president in 2018. But Cuba, in Cuba, the role of party secretary is considered just as powerful as the president. The leader is proposing that 60 should become the minimum age for joining the party's central committee. On the national front, Houston, Texas is currently under a state of emergency, a day after record rainfall killed five people. In all, 70,000 people were left without power, and there are predictions of flash flooding, as well as more rains. The dramatic rescues all over the Houston area weren't limited to just people. Watch as this boat heads to rescue horses flooded out of a stable, leading them as they struggle to swim through the deep waters. Until they eventually reach dry land. More than 13 inches of rain fell in just six hours, some areas receiving as much as 16 inches in the downpour. 
The fast rising waters have caused at least five deaths so far. One man found in his 18-wheeler in high waters, two others found in submerged cars. Authorities not able to respond to every call for help because of the high flooding. There's flooding in every part of Houston, according to officials. This is not the day to be on the roads in the city of Houston, or quite frankly, in our region. So if, unless it's an extreme, extreme emergency, I'm encouraging all Houstonians uh, to stay, to stay at home. And we'll keep an eye on what's happening there, but that's our news for now. For more news and sports, you can log on to www.barbadostoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper email updates or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us if you're moving around Barbados today this evening on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay in a supermarket or gas station near you. As well, we are on Channel 99, that's on Flow TV, or Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Kmar Jordan. Have a peaceful and wonderful evening, and be back here first thing tomorrow morning with Emmanuel Joseph.